has been found wanting or missing he is has kept us his love has kept us just give him praise this evening say we have come to worship you lord receive our thanksgiving father we give you glory this evening father we give you honor father we thank you for what you are doing give him praise i cannot hear you speaking open up your mouth this evening and worship the name of the most high Hallelujah to the Most High God who lives and reigns. Thank you, Lord Jesus, for what you are doing. It is a service. This year we say we have joy unspeakable. And we have been experiencing it. We just want to give him praise this evening. Father, we welcome you and we worship you. Welcome the name of the Lord this evening. Say, Father, we welcome you into this meeting. We welcome you into tonight's service. Worship Father, we have come to give you all the glory. Hallelujah. We have come to return praise unto you, O God. Father, we have come to return all the honor unto the Most High God. Open up your mouth this evening and worship the name of the Lord. Say, Holy Spirit, we welcome you. 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 Come and take over. Come and take charge over this service this evening. I cannot hear you praying. I say, open your mouth this evening and give him praise. Worship the name of the Most High God. Father, we give you glory. Father, we worship your holy name because you are God. Father, we give you glory because there is none like you. Welcome the Holy Spirit into this meeting. Say, Father, take over. Holy Spirit, come take over. Everything that will be done in this meeting, say, we welcome him. Take over. Let us have an encounter this evening open up your mouth and welcome the Holy Spirit father we give you glory we welcome you there is none compared unto the name of the Lord there is none that can be like him there is none like him father we say take over take over spirit flow spirit flow let us have an encounter this evening oh God let the, let, let the breath of the Holy Spirit come upon us this evening. Say, if send your rain this evening, let it rain upon us afresh, oh God. Father, we give you glory. Let your spirit come upon us this evening. Let the mass of Open up your mouth and worship the name of the Most High God. Father, we give you glory. We welcome you, oh God. Let us have an encounter this evening like no other. Let us have an encounter this evening like no other. Father, we welcome you once again, oh God. Father, we thank you for bringing us to the end of this month. We lift it up and we return all the praise. Yes, Lord. Yes, Lord. Yes, Lord. Yes, Lord. Yes, Lord. Yes, Lord. Father, we thank you. We thank you. We thank you. We thank you. Thank you, Lord Jesus. Thank you, Lord Jesus. Oh, Jesus, we welcome you. Hi, Halala. Father, we give you glory, oh God. Hey, we give you praise, we give you praise, mighty God, mighty God, mighty God. Thank you, Jesus. Holy Spirit. Thou art welcome in this place, Holy Spirit. Thou art welcome in this place, Omnipotent Father of mercy. Thou art welcome. 
tenemos Jehová
And he said, yeah. Hallelujah. Hey. Hey. Then I asked the Lord, what name fits you? What did he say? And he said, yeah. Then I asked the Lord, then I asked the Lord. Then I asked the Lord, what name fits you? And he said, yeah. Then I asked the Lord, what name fits you? What did he say? And he said, yeah. Oh, then I asked the Lord. Then I asked the Lord, what name fits you? And he said, and he said, yeah. Then I asked the Lord, what name fits you? And he said, and he said, yeah. Come on now, we say generations. Come on, say generations, generations. Generations after generations. He praises you. He praises you. Let no one sons you were. Generations after generations, we praise you. Let no one stop you up. Then I ask the Lord, what makes it you? What did He say? And He said, Yeah. Generations, generations, 
generation after generation is praising you that no one stops you up. Then I ask for no one is you. And he said, yeah. Yeah. Yeah, we say, yeah, the Holy One, yeah, you are, yeah, you are, yeah, the, yeah, the Holy One, yeah, the, yeah, the Holy One, Yahweh, yeah, 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 the King of Zion, yeah, the Holy One, yeah, the Holy One, yeah, yeah, the Holy One, Yahweh. Yeah, 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 The Holy One, Yahweh, the King of Zion. Yeah, the Holy One, Yahweh, the King of Zion. Yeah, the Holy One, Yahweh, the Holy One, Yahweh, you are Yahweh, the King of Zion. Worship. Oh, glorious. oh, glorious God, we praise your name. We lay our crown and worship. You. Oh, glorious. Oh, glorious God, we praise your name. We lay our crown and worship. Your majesty is forever. Oh, oh, oh glorious God, God, we worship you. Your majesty is forever. Oh, potent, oh, potent one, we worship you. Your majesty. Your majesty. 
mighty on the throne. Hey, you reign, you reign, shine, Zion's king. Cry out, you are mighty on your throne. You reign, you reign, you reign, you reign, you reign, shine, Zion's king. God Almighty, the strong and breasted one, great Jehovah, I am, I am, and you are no more. all the praise unto the most high God for in the precious mighty name of Jesus we have worshipped Thank 
Just going to read survival reading for today, Psalm 126, from verse 1. A song of our saints, it says, When the Lord brought back the captivity of Zion, we were like them that dream. Next verse, we're going to read everything. It says, Then our mouth was filled with laughter and our tongue with singing. Then said they among the nations, the Lord has done great things for them. The Lord has done great things for us, therefore we are glad. Amen? It says, bring back our captivity, O Lord, as the streams in the south. Those who sow in tears shall reap in joy. He who continually goes forth weeping, bearing seed for sowing, shall doubtless come again with rejoicing, bringing his sheaves with him. Amen. And the Lord bless the reading of his word. Amen. Good evening, church. You're welcome to the wonderful Night of Wonders. You're welcome, everybody. It's nice to see you. We're here. We're alive. We're well. Glory be to God Almighty. So welcome to Diadem Church. This is our extraordinary Night of Wonders. And the theme tonight is reset. We're resetting our mindset. We're resetting the way we think. The way we are, our approach, we're going into the glorious, wondrous, magnificent, you know, godliness. We're going into something special. So please keep your minds open for something wonderful tonight. You're welcome. And um, if this is your first time, you're welcome. We welcome you. We're here every Sunday from 10 a.m. to 12.30 you're welcome if you don't have your permanent church. You're welcome to join us either here or online. Um, also, as part of our regular responsibilities, please let us share the word of God on our different social media platforms. You know what to do. I don't have to go over it again and again. And as we do so, we shall be blessed in Jesus' mighty name. Amen. We also have a regular Wednesday service online either YouTube or Facebook, you get sent the link. If you would like to get sent the link, please just ask our wonderful head of the usher. They'll add you to the contact list and you can get the links. And this is Wednesday service, 7 p.m. to 8 p.m. every week. And we also have a house fellowship on Thursdays or Fridays or whichever day is convenient for you. If you need more information, please do ask um, Pastor Shadi, and she will be able to, you know, inf update you on what to do. Also, don't forget that Pastor has written lots of different books, so keep your mind enlightened. We've got some at the back. You can get them on Amazon, and as you do so, you shall be blessed. So, I think, uh, um, confession? Or not someone wonders that? Okay. This is new to me, so forgive me. So but thank you. <laughs> Have a wonderful evening in Jesus' mighty name. Amen. Hallelujah. During you ancient Zion King, Kados, Kados, you are mighty on your throne. You reign, you reign, you reign, you ancient Zion King. Cados, Cados, you are mighty on your throne. 
Are we together there? I want us to sing that song. Kadosh, he said, only. 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 If you have seen him only, and you are in him, there is nothing that can defy you anymore. You reign, you reign, you reign. You reign, Zion King. Kadosh, Kadosh, you are mighty on your throne. I want you to open your mouth and say, Lord, I have knowledge your reign in this meeting today. Have your way in my life. Lord, have your way. Have your way. Have your way. Have your way. You reign over all things. And Lord, I bring all things about my life to you today. Carlos, Carlos, you are mighty on your throne. Amen. There is a story of a man in the Bible. You know the way the Bible started about him was so amazing. Someone that they said that he brought sorrow. And when Bible is narrating his story, they first started it with, and Jabesh was more honorable. There is a resetting for someone this meeting. There is a resetting for me today. The life of that person was so bad, I don't think that anyone has ever experienced what he experienced. But the man said, if I can call upon the name of the Lord, he's going to hear me. And the Bible says, and Jabesh call upon the name of the Lord. I don't know where you need reset today. I just want you to call upon him today. What the man said, he said, thou, thou, thou would have blessed me. What he's saying is this. I need an empowerment that I will be able to fulfill destiny. He's one of the children of Abraham. If everything is well with Abraham, everything must be well with him. But why things are so difficult with him? I want you to say, Lord, I bring myself to you today. I need a touch of heaven over every area of my life. First pray that prayer. We have just five minutes. Lord, I need a touch of heaven. A touch of heaven. When we are talking about the touch of heaven, we are talking of empowerment to become what you have been destined to become. He asked for empowerment. He said that thou would have blessed me indeed. Lord, I need a torch today. I need a torch today. A torch of heaven. A torch of heaven. I need a torch of heaven. I need a torch of heaven. A torch is what I need. Torch of heaven upon my life touch of heaven upon my home touch of heaven upon my career this morning this night lord i need a touch 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 my god i need a touch of heaven in jesus mighty name we pray maybe you don't understand that if you look at the word reset it means to adjust something or to change it from what it is to where it ought to be. Hallelujah. There are some situations that we found ourselves that we don't ought to be in that situation. But when God is at work, He is the Almighty. He's mighty in all situations. Lord, in my situation this night, I want you to prove your mighty power on me. Your touch is what I need. Your touch is what I need. Lord, touch my life this night. Lord, touch my life. I need a reset. Lord, touch my life this, this night. I want you to open your mouth and pray that prayer. Lord, touch my life. Touch my life. That woman with that issue of blood, 
He said, this is not how it's supposed to be with me. I need a reset. He said, if I can touch him, he's going to touch me. My God, touch my life today. I'm here for you. I'm here for your touch. I'm here for what you can do. I'm here for what you can release. I'm here for it, Lord. Touch my life. I need a touch of heaven this month, this night. Lord, I need a touch. 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 I need your touch in my life. I need a touch in my life. I need a touch in my life. Research my situation. Research my life. I need a touch. I need a touch. In Jesus' mighty name we pray. We are talking about resetting. Maybe you don't understand it very well. There are many things that God needs to touch in our lives. Isaiah was prophesying, whoa, 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 whoa. But a day came in his life when the fire of, of God touched his tongue. Things changed. He started prophesying about the birth of Christ. About those good things that will come. I want you to pray for that touch. For that touch. Is that touch. Maybe you have been speaking negative things before. There's going to be a resetting today. Because God is going to touch your tongue. His word is going to touch your life. Lord, I need your touch upon my life today. Lord, it is your touch that I need. Lord, I prepare myself for you. It is your touch. It is your touch that I need. Touch my life today. Touch my life today. I want my life to depict your glory and your honor. I want your, my life to speak of your glory and your power. Lord, touch my life. Lord, touch my life. Lord, touch my life. Lord, touch my life. Lord, I need your touch, oh Lord, today. Thank you, Lord. Heavenly Father, we are here, oh Lord, to be touched by heaven. We want everything about our life to be touched. There, there might be a reset according to the plans and programs of God for our lives. Lord, we humble ourselves before you, oh Lord. And we say, Lord, touch every soul here in the name of Jesus. Both online and on ground. We pray for your touch, oh Lord. Lord, touch us. Let our life not remain the same again. From here, let us be able to say, we are moving from glory to glory. From power to power. From honor to honor. Never will anything, anyone go out of this place and still tell a tale of woes again. Thank you, gracious God, for what you are releasing upon us. In Jesus' mighty name, we pray. Amen. Hallelujah. I would like us to welcome in our midst a wonderful man of God, a great minister, Brad Toby, and he's going to lead us in the ministration for this afternoon. Let's give him a clap offering. Brad Toby, we welcome you, sir. Amen. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. It's fine. Amen. 
Amen. Amen. If you have seen the goodness of God, if you know the Lord has been so good to you, I mean, you woke up this morning, that's something. Amen. You have breath in your lungs, that's worth something. Hallelujah. You know, we can be quite ungrateful sometimes. I'm not saying you're ungrateful, but when you look in the news, when you, or you step into the hospital, then you will know how much and the, the, the amount of grace God has given you. Amen. You haven't done anything to earn it, to deserve it. But God has shown you love and mercy. Even being here today is by His grace and by His mercy. Amen. And you know, I, I, I saw the flyer came in and I was just thinking, reset, reset. And the Holy Spirit just drops in my mind like, your life is a reset. Amen. My life has gone through a reset. And by the grace of God, I don't even look like my past. Amen. You see, when God resets your life, you don't look like the past. He makes everything new, everything beautiful, because what God has created is beautiful. Say to yourself, I am beautiful. Say to yourself, I am wonderfully made. Say to yourself, I am fearfully made. Hallelujah. Um, I just want to share a little bit of my testimony, um, of my story, basically. I, no, keep playing, keep playing, boss, keep playing, boss. Um, you know, back many years ago, basically, I was I just roaming around without purpose, without a life. I used to steal a lot. You know, I, I had a rough time upbringing with my parents, well, mostly my dad. My, I wasn't with my mom. And my dad was old. He didn't know how to handle, you know, uh, a millennial. Should I put it that way? <laughs> um, so there was a lot of war within me and my dad. And I was a very small kid, but I was so stubborn. And I would steal his stuff, go and sell it, go and play games, go and play with my friends. All I just wanted to do was play. But my dad, because of his upbringing as well, all he wanted me to do is lock me up in the house you know don't watch tv only eat when i will eat and all the stuff um i'm not going to all those details and you know you see me today you will know you know i've been i've been in jail but i don't look like i've been in jail amen no i've I, I've, I, I've you know i've been homeless multiple times but I don't look like I've been homeless. Amen. And that's what the reset of God does to you. Hallelujah. See, when God resets your life. Hallelujah. And many of you might see that and not understand the full meaning of it now. But maybe many, a well, few years down the line, you will begin to understand. And only those who have gone through that reset can truly, fully appreciate what God has done in your life, in their lives. Hallelujah. Amen. So just lift, your, lift up your hands and begin to bless the name of the Lord. Say, Lord, I thank you for my life. I thank you for where I am. I thank you for where you have brought me from. You know, the psalmist says, he lifts us up from the miry clay and he sets our feet upon a rock. Thank you, Lord Jesus, that we are standing upon a solid rock. Hallelujah. I don't, I don't used to be the way I was anymore. I don't live the way I was anymore. It's all in the past. Now I'm in a reset. I have a future. I have a hope in Christ Jesus. The riches of heaven are at my disposal. The power of God is at my disposal. Hallelujah. Oh Lord, we bless your holy name. Father, we give you praise. Father, we give you praise. Oh, you reset us, oh God. You reset us, oh God, from the inside. Yes. You change us, oh God. You make us brand new. Oh, Jesus, you love us. Jesus, 
you love us so. We are grateful. We are grateful. We are grateful, Lord. We are grateful, God. Hey, we are grateful. King of kings, we are grateful. Beautiful God, we are grateful. Omnipotent God, we are grateful. The great I am, we are grateful. The Lion of Judah, we are grateful. The God of all ages, we are grateful. The beginning and the end, we are grateful. The author and the finisher of our faith, we are grateful. We are grateful. But now I am found I was lost But you found me Oh, I was down And you lifted me <laughs> I was in my shame And you covered me with glory <laughs> Yeah, yeah
want you to just lift your voice together. Let's lift our voice together. And just the keys, just the keyboard. Let's sing that song again. Our God is holy. We are in the presence of a holy God. We are in the presence of the almighty God. The Bible says in his presence, there's liberty, there's freedom. At his right hand, a pleasure forevermore. Just come before his presence with thanksgiving, with praise. And let's sing that song together in unity, in one accord. With just the keyboard, just the keyboard. Hallelujah. Oh, yes. Worthy is the Lamb. Let God hear your voice. Worthy is the Lamb. You are holy. You are holy. You are holy. Holy.
for all the things you've done for me. Oh, 
This left side of the body towards the hip. In the mighty name of Jesus, Son of the living God, I cast that swelling to its root now. And I command healing right now. Every other area of the body where there are swelling, in the name of Jesus, whether they be swelling of tumors, whether they be swelling of infection, or inflammation, or any kind of swelling at all, in the mighty name of Jesus, I command healings right now. I cast out that swelling now. Boom! In the name of Jesus. There's somebody here. The one side of your ear to the top of the head. It's like there's pounding there. I command healings right now. So therefore, any pain in any part of the body, any pounding, 
from the head, crown of the head to the sole of the feet. I command healings right now. In the name of Jesus. Now there's somebody under the sound of my voice. The Lord said, this is the situation. The doors are shut. Thank you, Lord Jesus. But by prophet, the Lord brought Israel out of Egypt. By prophet, she was preserved. Now I command the doors that have been shut to open now. One, two, three, four, five. Within five days, I command that door opening to manifest. I command a reversal of decisions. In the mighty name of Jesus. Everybody facing any kind of open door, any kind of shut door. Now that's where God wants me to start tonight. Will you lift up your voice before heaven right now and say, Jehovah, this door ought not to shut. It mustn't be shut. For this one door that is shut, I command two, three to open for me right now. Are you with me in this meeting? Open your mouth right now. Every shut door, it might be a family door, it might be a career door, it might be a developmental door, any kind of door, advancement, financial, a karama coating, it might be health door. The doctor tells you that there's no solution, there's a terminal case. In the name of Jesus, I command the door of healing to open for you right now. In the name of Jesus, I command the door of healing to open for you right now. The door of the job, the door of the promotion. The door of the business, the door of the marriage, the door of the womb. I command open right now. Okay, go ahead. Open your mouth and pray. The presence of God is here to validate your prayer. The presence of God is here to bring to pass your desire. The presence of God is here to bring to pass that which you are trusting God for. Thank you, choir. If you just go to your seat so that you can pray very well. Bless you, bless you, bless you. Will you pray wherever you are under the sound of my voice? I command the door to open up. Thou dust must not be shut against me, against my son, against my daughter, against my work. In the name of Jesus, let there be a reset of the door for me right now. Are you there? Are you still praying? Are you tired praying? Pray it. I can't hear your voice. Hallelujah. I can't hear your voice. Every shut door, every pending door, I command hope me right now. Hallelujah. Bless be God. Jehovah God, every door that has been shut against anyone, we start from there tonight. Let it be opened. Oh, Murphy's door, let it be opened. Promotion door, doors, let them be opened. Advancement in career doors, let them be opened. Educational door, let them be opened. Financial doors, let them be opened. Amen. Health doors, let them be opened. Amen. In the name of Jesus. Amen. Every demonic force that has been standing behind the door, preventing it from opening for you, little door, door ajar, door not opening, door being resistant, in the name of Jesus, we cast them out for you right now. Amen. The doors open for you now. Amen. Enter into a new level. Enter into enlargement. It is done. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. Now lift up your right hand wherever you are and just worship God one more time this night. The presence of God is here. The glory of God is here. You are set for a renewal, a revival, a new level of reset before the Lord. Hallelujah. Give Him praise this night. Give Him glory. We give him glory, magnify him. Bless shall be the name of the Lord. Hallelujah. Heavenly Father, we want to thank you for your presence. We want to thank you for your glory. Thank you for the night of wonders. Thank you for those who are on ground. And thank you for those who are online. Lord, let your anointing, let it permeate the atmosphere on ground and online. Let the rain of your spirit fall. Let the rain of your power fall. Let the rain of your glory fall. Let the rain of your grace fall. Let something happen to somebody that will live in indelible mark of change for better. In the mighty name of Jesus. Holy Spirit, have your way. Help us today. In word and in communication of the virtue of the Spirit. Thank you, Lord. 
In Jesus' mighty name, we pray. Amen. If you believe God is here, say bigger amen. amen. No, lie up, lie up. Amen, amen, hallelujah. You tried, but I, I think I want something better than that. If you know that God is here, you are here to have encounter with his glory and his power, shout a bigger amen. amen. Woo! Come on, shout hallelujah! Shout hallelujah! Shout hallelujah! Bless the God. Put your hands together and take your seat. Hallelujah. Amen. Let's appreciate uh, Minister Toby for leading us before God in worship. God bless you. Appreciate Pastor Shagun as well, his companion, the coordinator of their group. God bless you. Can you appreciate that in choir? Give, him, give God praise on their behalf. And everybody who has come to set up, who have, who have prayed behind the scene, God bless you. Appreciate God for yourself too. Amen. Say, I thank God for my life. Hallelujah. You don't thank God for your life? You think it's not worth it? It's worth it. Say, my life is worth thanksgiving. All right. I, I, I'll be leading you in the word of God shortly this night because I want you to pray. Amen. Amen. Reset. I want you to really pray. You know, I was listening to the testimony of Minister Toby, how God reset his life. By the way, Sunday service is communion service. The Easter service is an anointing service. And we're going to be anointing people in the name of the Lord with oil. So put them in your calendar. Now, reset. Amen. For there to be reset, there must be a reference point. Amen? Amen. God worth that no man perish, but that all come to the knowledge of truth. That's the reference point of redemption. So when you heard Minister Toby talk of how he, he went the wrong way, God reset him back to the original. Say amen. amen. Every born again child of God is a child of reset. You are a product of reset. And you are a candidate for continuous, perpetual reset until you see the Lord in glory. Because as we behold him as through a mirror, we are being transformed reset from glory to glory as by the spirit of the Lord. Say amen. amen. Genesis chapter 1. Let's start from there this, this night. Genesis and chapter 1. Hallelujah. Amen. Genesis and chapter 1. Thank you Lord Jesus. <laughs> reset. In the beginning God created the heavens and the earth. And nothing was wrong with the heavens. Amen? Amen? Nothing was wrong with the heavens. You can see it there. It was the earth. The one that concerns. You know, at time how you look at life that it seems it's, it's happening for everybody but you. Are you getting me now? You look at it at time, it looks like every other, that's why they talk about the grass looks greener on the other side, the pasture. Amen? But there is a God in heaven who is interested in the affairs of men on earth. Say, that's my God. I can't hear you say. So the heart was without form and void and darkness was on the face of the deep and the spirit of God was hovering over the face of the water. Why you have not been lost? You know, I like that testimony of, of, of Minister Toby. Why God didn't allow him to be killed all those times was because the Spirit of God it was hovering over the water, waiting for when God will strategically strike. Amen. Amen. What we are saying is this, God is working on something. I said God is working on something. In spite of what you've gone through, why you've not lost your mind is because there's a, the Spirit of God is hovering. God has not done nothing. The darkness was still there. The voidness was still there. But the Spirit of God won't let the earth go its way. I've got a word for somebody today. That it doesn't matter how it looked like all 
hope are lost. There is an hovering spirit over the circumstance. There is an hovering spirit of God over the situation. God is strategically positioning for a strike. And when he strikes, everything will change. Everything will turn. Amen. You know, at times you're praying, you're praying, you're praying on issue. It looks like nothing is changing in the outside. The spirit is over. You are applying. The job is not showing forth. You know, and you are thinking maybe you are cursed. No, the spirit is over. And at one point, God will strike. Amen. You pray, the pain is still there. It doesn't mean the healing is not taking place. The spirit is over. You're working hard. The money seems not to be showing up. Just money for food, money for this is showing up. Yeah, it's not the time for you to start saying uh, the wrong stuff and start condemning yourself and start giving up to hopelessness. The spirit is hovering. Amen? Amen. And God has even done nothing. But there's a preparation of heaven for the breakthrough. I've come to announce to somebody God is preparing your breakthrough. The enlargement, the increase in the mighty name of Jesus. You know, you know at times you want something so badly and you are really walking towards it and it looks like it's not happening. It doesn't mean it's not happening. In fact, what the Spirit of God is doing is doing the work of both preservation and preparation. If you are trying to lead somebody to Christ and instead of them getting better, they are getting worse. Don't, don't agree with Satan. That they are gone, that they are lost. The spirit is hovering over their darkness. Are you getting me now? You can imagine from stealing to imprisonment, but the spirit is, was over. One day, the investor will be sent into their life and there will be a turnaround. Amen. Say amen. amen. Say amen. amen. Now, let's read this scripture further and verse 3. Then God struck. God said, let there be light. And there was light. Amen. Amen. And verse, verse 31. Let's read it together, everybody. One, two, go. Then God saw everything. How many things? Everything. How can you fix everything? Your God can actually fix everything. Say, my God, my God. can fix Everything. You know what Satan wants you to do? Satan wants you to believe God can fix this, but he can't fix that. It can't be too messy for God to fix. Ah. And it can't be too many for God to reset. No, it can't. God saw that. How many things? Everything. Everything. Now, this becomes your testimony. Now, I can't hear you say amen. I said everything. God saw that everything he made and, and indeed it was very good. So, then it was the sixth day. Let's start this way. There, there is a reference point or a master plan over everybody's life. God will not reset Pastor Benga to be Minister Toby. Toby. No. Say, so God has a plan for my life. There is a master plan of the earth that was suddenly consumed by darkness, by emptiness, and by formlessness. Amen? Amen. And God said, All we need to do is to go through the process of reset. Reset for somebody might not be an event. It might not be an event. It might be a what? A process. How many days does it take for God to fix the whole thing? Six days. Some of us, when events happen and everything is not reset, everything is not fixed, we give up. In fact, we set date by March 30. If God doesn't reset everything, I'm done. No, that's not the way it works. Remember, a day in the eye of the Lord is like a thousand years. So which means what it took God to fix everything like that is human 6,000 years if we are to bring human efforts to get it done. Some of you, you are fixing stuff in your life 
three months, six months, two years, ten years, and you are trying to give up because, you know, you've forgotten that the process of fixing it, the reset, is a process. It's not an event. It is accumulation of events that leads to the process. A little turn around here, a little change of story here, a little favor here, a little progress here. The sixth day, God saw that everything was good. Say amen. amen. Now I prophesy upon you tonight that a little air, a little change air, including the one you are contacting in this night of wonders, everything we accumulate to proper reset. Amen. Everything we ultimately be good. Amen. In the mighty name of Jesus. Amen. Now listen to me. Everything starts with God and must end the way God wants it. Listen to me. You see, everything starts, started with God. See, everything, everything. About, my life about my life started with God. Started with now, listen, what happened on the way irrespective, it must end up being very good. In the beginning, God. Was that not it? He said, in what? In the beginning, God created heaven and earth. Then darkness showed up, emptiness showed up, and you would think that things that happen between Alpha and Omega is enough to change the master plan of God. Not at all. So when God shows up as Alpha, he's waiting behind to show up also as Omega. It won't lead you to a journey that won't end well. All you need to do is to stay on him. Listen to me. In the beginning, God created heaven and earth. Then something happened. What happened? Let's leave it to theology. But what's, what happened took time. It billions of years. All the glacier age that science talk about happened in between that period. Then God showed up. When God showed up, everything ended up being good. How long the darkness reigned, we were not told. How deep the water was, we were not told. What we, were know, we knew is that the ground was submerged by water. Life was exterminated by water. Darkness was deep enough to be handled. But one day God showed up and cleared all the mess. Every mess in your life. Every mess in your head. Every mess in your family. Every mess in your finance. Every mess in your body. In the mighty name of Jesus, the resetting power of God visit them today. Clearing them all up for you. In the mighty name of Jesus. Listen to me. Things weren't working. Simply. If you want to put it in, in normal language, things weren't simply what? Working. I, I don't know who I'm talking to now. That life looked like things weren't just working. Maybe there's somebody hearing me. It looks like things what? Are not just working. Or rather, there are Chaos. Raining in your life or in one area of your life. Listen to me. The will of God is for reset to be initiated, but also to be seen to a logical conclusion. One of the challenges with Christians is when Christians hear good sermon, they initiate reset. When we hear good sermon, we decide, I want to pray more. I want to know God more. I want to love God more. I want to pray more. I want to give more. I want to do business. I want to apply for a new job. But along the line, when it is the first day, second day, third day, and it still remains some three more days, then we just like, you know what? I thought that one day would be enough. God said, let there be like, so it should be enough. But God waited. If God waits, you need to wait. God waited, and on the sixth day, God saw that everything was good. You can't afford to stop until you see that everything is good. Say, I can't afford to stop until I see that everything is good. I can't hear you say it. Say, I can't afford to stop until everything changes for good. So, you know what? A reset till everything is good by God's standard. You need to come to terms with God's standard. God's standard for your life. I wish above all things 
that you be in health and prosper as your soul prosper. So if I'm not in health and I'm not prospering, I will say, you know what? There is a continual reset going on in my life. And I'm not going to wait. I'm not going to stop until this reset takes its perfect effect upon my life. And I see me prospering and I see me in health. Say amen. amen. It is not good that man should be alone. So if you desire marriage and you have attempted it, it's not working. And you have tried it. It looks like it's not working. Listen to me. All you need is to believe in God of reset. And say, I'll keep resetting it. And keep resetting it until something works. Something will work. Say amen. amen. Say amen. amen. Hallelujah. Amen. Until everything is good by God's standard, your marriage, your health, you are winning, you are prosperous, you are progressing. Amen. amen. Light and life in fullness and in form in your life. Now, this is the reference point. You can't talk of reset. You know, if, you, if I say, can you reset that clock for me? You will ask me, what is the time? Because there must always be a reference point. A born again child of God has a reference point. And if you don't know, the reference point is Genesis chapter 1. That's the reference point. The reference point for everyone that has something to do with God is what? I'm not hearing you. Romans chapter 1. Let's confirm it. Listen, the, the standard is not Matthew. It's not Luke. Matthew, Luke, all the other scripture came to confirm Genesis Chapter 1. I get it, sir? Yes. In the beginning, God created heaven and earth. Things went wrong, and God redeemed it. Everything. Hallelujah. I get it now. Amen. In between mm -hmm. that verse 1 and verse 31 mm -hmm. is Jesus Christ. Mm -hmm. You know, God said, you know, in the beginning was the word. The word that reset everything. And that word was God. And with him all things were created. And there was nothing that was created without him. And in him was life. And the land light was the life of men. Now, so in between that chapter 1 of verse 1 and verse 31 is Jesus Christ. Is the Holy Spirit. Is Pentecost. Is everything you can think of. Genesis chapter 1 is the reference point of life the way God wants it. Life not taken over by darkness. Life not taken over by voidness. Life not taken over by formlessness. Life that has purpose. Say, that's my life. Say, my life is that life. Not taken over by darkness. Not taken over by emptiness. Not taken over by formlessness. Say, life with purpose. Say, that's God reference. Say, life with fullness in it. Hallelujah. Everything that, that they have needed for proper functioning was what God was resetting for those six days. He said, let the water gather. He said, let the ground show. He said, let the ground bring forth plants that have fruit that bear seed in them. He said, let the animals show up on ground. Let them show up in water. He said, let greater light rule the day. Let lesser light lose the night. He said, let's put star in constellation. Both function and beauty. Fullness. Say, my life. My life. Functioning, Functioning and beautiful. Say, that's the will of God. Will of God. Listen to me. The standard is your life functioning and beautiful. Because that's the will of God. Amen. No darkness at all. I said no darkness at all. No darkness oppressing you. No darkness afflicting you. No depression. No oppression. Satan has no room around you. The will of God is that no darkness, no emptiness, no voidness, no formlessness. The will of God is light in his fullness. Life in his fullness. Direction. Purpose. Because listen to me, there's nothing God created that had no purpose. Everything had purpose. So when it was formlessness, it was, when it was formless, it was purposeless. You could do nothing with it. Your life is such that, it's not that kind of life that, you know, at times you look at somebody and say, you are so useless. No, 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 no. A child of God can't be useless. No. There's a purpose for my life. Say it. Say it like you mean it. Say, God has a purpose for my life. Listen to me. Your parents had purpose for your life before they gave birth to you. They wanted to prove to their family that they are not barren. Mm. 
They wanted to tell their husband family that they are not barren. They wanted to tell their friend that they are virile, they, have, they, are, they can impregnate a woman. You know where I came from, any man that can impregnate a woman and is called a married man, they said it's a responsible man. It's not true. It's not true. We've discovered that that's not very true at all. Responsibility is not impregnating a woman. Are you getting me right now? So people, government has purpose for you, is it not? To collect tax, to make constitution and legislation on you, because if there's no legislation, nobody will gather in Westminster and they won't be paid. So they have to look for something. So they had, the art is very hot. Now, okay, so we're going to, they, they, they have their purpose for you. They even have purpose for people's children now. Legislating all kind of stupid, demonic, satanic things. They want to reassign gender to a child. Somebody say, God forbid, bad thing. God forbid, bad thing. If they teach it in your children's school, fight them. Say, my son will not attend. You know, they are doing gay BC now. Uh -huh. Not for your own children. They have their own agenda. But God has a bigger plan for my life. For my children. Your children are not government children. No, 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 no. They are not council children. They took somebody's child the other time. When I took the phone, I said, stop, stop it now. I said, for you, those three children are nine to five jobs for you. For somebody, it is the product of divine endowment and blessing. So stop that nonsense. Say, yeah, yeah. I said, yeah, you are doing your job. It's nine to five. You take the boxes, collect the child from them. The, the, the child said is, is depressed. So you see people projecting their demons on children, their dysfunction on children. Somebody say, not my child. Not my child. Say it like you mean it. Not my child. Say it like you mean it. Anything it will take, do it. When you wake up in the night, keep cursing those demons. You know, it's, it's more than just being protesting. You understand what I'm saying now? It's more than we're protesting. You protest from now till tomorrow, as you are protesting, they are protesting too. There's no party that will be in power forever. If Tories come and say no, tomorrow, Democrat, at, what's their name? Labour, will come and say yes. So you must keep cutting that monster in its root. Every Gog and Magog of London, every demonic entity that wants to take people's children, cast in the name of the Lord. Amen. Say amen. amen. But that's not where I'm coming to. God has a purpose for your life. God has a purpose for marriage. Marriage is not, it's not TikTok. You see, marriage is not taking selfie. You can TikTok now. When you switch off the camera, start fighting, start slapping each other, start cursing out. Yeah? God has purpose for marriage. God has reason why he put the head on top and leg beneath. God has purpose for every part of your body. God has purpose for your eye. And God has purpose for your brain. In fact, God has purpose for your propensity. There's nobody propensity that has no use in God. Paul said, you see, the manner with which I'm preaching the gospel, that was the same manner I was persecuting those who were preaching it before. So it's a nature. Agabus came with prophecy. He said, Who's, who has this uh, overcoat? He said, it's Paul. He said, this is how they will tie the hand of this person when they get to Jerusalem. He said, why well, are you breaking my heart? I don't want to just be tied. I want to be chained. There's nothing in you that is useless to God, including your pain and your failure if you let him reset them. You know how God created light? He used darkness. God who called out light out of darkness. God didn't say, this darkness is very useless. Let's throw it away. God said, no, wait, angel. The darkness has use. God called out light out of darkness. Lift up your two hands. Nothing is useless in your home, in your children, in your family. Everything around you is useful for God. Everything around you bringing glory to God. Everything around you bringing glory to God. Even your failure, even your weakness, even, even everything around you, in your family, bringing glory to God, bringing glory to his name, making his purpose to get established on heart. Will you make your, 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 your confession strong in prayer where you are seated? Say, God, who can make something out of darkness? 
emptiness and make something out of voidness and make something out of formlessness. He's going to make something out of my life. There's a reset going on on my son, on my daughter, for better. In the name of Jesus, in the mighty name of Jesus, in the mighty name of Jesus, blessed shall be God. In Jesus' precious name, amen. amen. Romans chapter 1, let's do it quickly. The reference point for the kind of life God wants for you is Genesis chapter 1. Let's, let's see. Romans chapter 1. Yeah? Let's read from verse 19. Amen? Amen? Verse 19. Do you want to read it together with pastor? Let's see. It. Romans 1, 19. What did he say? Can you put it there quickly? Because what may be known of God is manifest in them. In what? So, you know, we, we can't know everything about God. That's why I asked, for example, they said in the beginning, God created heaven and earth. Then the earth was void. The question is, was that the way God created it? Absolutely not. So what happened? We were not told. And we don't really need to know. Because when we get there, we will know. Amen? Amen. We were with God when he did it. We don't need to know. God has Job, those questions, when Job thought he knew a lot. In the book of Job and chapter 40, downward, God asked Job, God said, who is the mother of thunder? He said, where does lightning come from? He said, when I created the heart, what was the measurement of the depth? So which means, before this time, they measured. Well, you don't understand what I'm saying? So there are many things that we don't know about God. My son was asking me some questions about God, Jesus, God the Father, Jesus, and Holy Spirit, you know, and I was explaining to him that the first thing you need to divorce God from is human form. God is not a 3D figure like human being. God omnipresent doesn't mean he will live here and go there. He will simultaneously be everywhere. So the Bible is saying there are many things that cannot be known about God. Yeah? But he said there are certain things that can be known about God. What is the will of God for my life? What is the purpose of God for my life? What is the plan of God in my life? How does God want my life to turn out? He said God has a way of showing it. He said they are shown to it to them. How does he show it? Let's read verse 20 together, everybody. One, two, go. Let's read it. You see that? Aha. Uh Aha. -huh. Aha. Uh -huh. uh -huh. Even his eternal power. Did you see that now? Read it, read it. Even his eternal power and what? And God there. So that nobody is with excuse. He's saying, if you don't understand it, if you can't understand anything, he said, go and understand Genesis chapter 1. He said, once you see the form of creation, what God did there, what did God do there? There was darkness, there was voidness, and there was formlessness. And God said, none of them are supposed to stay. And when God finished, everything was good. No theology can dispute that. So when somebody says, maybe God is trying you with this sickness, say it's not true. God wasn't trying the heart with that darkness, was he? Because if God was trying the heart with that darkness, why would he remove it again? God is not a bipolar who is happy in the morning and sad in the evening, no. God wasn't trying the heart with emptiness and formlessness. An enemy did it. And God took it away. Amen. Every form of darkness in your life is not the work of God, and it must go. Amen. Every form of emptiness in your life is not the work of God, it must go. Amen. Every form of voidness and every form of formlessness, lack of purpose, being lost. You know, lack of purpose makes people get lost in life. They're just sleeping, eating, waking up, lost. So, you know, at times you even think of, maybe I should just kill myself. Some people believe if they kill themselves, they will be popular. So you even see people announce suicide on social media that, that he wants to commit suicide now. No, 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 no. No, it's, it's lack of purpose. And they will start blaming everybody around them except the fact that Satan has made people to be submerged in formlessness. Somebody say not here. Not here. Say it like you mean it. Not here. Say not in my life. Not in my, life. Not in my territory. Not in my, territory. Not in my aura. So, the standard had been set. The standard is Genesis chapter 1. Not even chapter 2. Chapter 1. What is the standard? Genesis chapter 1. The God who had the master plan with him 
resetting everything that the enemy had touched. That same God has the master plan for your life. I don't know what the enemy has touched. Jehovah is resetting them. I can't hear you say amen. amen. Okay, let's put it better. Maybe life has happened. You know, we say life happened to something. Okay, so whatsoever life has happened to in your life, around you, and is mimicking darkness, voidness, formlessness, Jehovah reset them for you amen. until everything is very good. Amen. I can't hear your amen. amen. Very good about your health. Amen. Very good about your career. Amen. Very good about your children. Amen. Very good about your marital life. Very good about your spiritual life. Everything very good about your finance. Everything very, very good in making progress. Say the work of God in my life, we make everything very good. Say, I believe it. Say, I believe it. I believe it. I believe it. I believe it. I don't know about you. I believe it. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. Thank you, Lord Jesus. Amen. So the scripture here say, I have no excuse to blame darkness. You know, God didn't have excuse to be blaming darkness and say, oh, this, this, what kind of nonsense is this? Don't you know I'm God? How can darkness call me a oh God? You know, the Bible said, God, he said, this is the message we had from him, that God is light and there is no darkness in him at all. You know, God didn't come and say, after everything, how can everything be darkness? You know, at times we say, after all the prayer, after all the fasting, no, stop it, brother, stop it, sister. Stop it, stop it. God wasn't blaming darkness and taking victim position. He wasn't blaming his parents. See, if Toby sat there blaming his dad, my dad, he wouldn't be saved. It won't be a blessing that he is to you today. Stop blaming somebody. Stop blaming. Listen to me. You have control over yourself, not others. Even parents on children, after a while, you will lose the control. The what they will leave for you we, is not control again, is respect. So in the next 20 years, if I come, I say, Momore, come. This is the way I want you to do it. If he says that, it's just respect. And maybe because he knows I'm anointed. <laughs> that if I say something, it can happen. And I won't say that thing. Say amen. amen. And he knows I have plenty of money. You know what I'm saying now? And I can call my lawyer. Uh -huh, uh -huh. Ah. <laughs> so he's going to do it the way I want it. He can't wake up tomorrow and say he doesn't believe in Jesus. He must believe in Jesus. His children, children must believe in Jesus. You can't bring an unbeliever home and say you fall in love. You can't fall in love with an unbeliever. Not now, not later. You fall out of it straight. You can't even fall in it. You, how will you? How will you? I mean, you, you, you can't. How will you? How will you? You can't. No, no, not at all. You know? No, no. My daughters can't fall in love with unbeliever. How will you do it? Unbeliever? What light, what fellowship does, First, Second Corinthians chapter 6, verse 14, what fellowship does light have to do with darkness? And let me talk to you parents. You know many of you, your children are now growing up. Don't let your 15 years, 14 years start saying they have girlfriend. You, you tell them to stop that nonsense. They don't have maturity to handle emotions that come with relationship. Because, you know, what happens is now you see 14 year old say he has girlfriend. Now, one stupid guy will now break his heart. He now says he doesn't believe in heterosexuality again because women are not good. Now, he's now falling in love with boys. They say he has met a lot of challenge in a 15 year had met a lot of challenge in relationship. What kind of challenge? <laughs> see, I hear. Those of you young men sitting at the back there, you know your children are growing. It's not woke for your 15 year to say he's bringing girlfriend home. And you are excusing them to sit down. They, they, are not, they, they, they won't even try it in your house. No, no. Even if Satan enter into their heart, the way he enter the heart of Judas, as soon as they see the door of your house, that Satan will leave them. I tell you, brother. Now, you need to start taking certain things back. And one of it is take your family. You understand what I'm saying? No, 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 no. That the house you bought with your money, that you gave a room to a child in it and say you can't come in. They say, Dad, you can't come in. In what house? <laughs> if you knock, it's out of respect for their dignity. And that knock is even a very brief one palm, and you are inside. <laughs> you see what I'm saying? They're talking about, they're talking about life here now. 
We're talking about life here now. Don't give, don't, don't give up your family to Satan. It's not woke. There's nothing, they, none of them always end up well. They don't. So it's been proven again and again and again. Children are to be mentored by adults. That's why they didn't give back to themselves. If, if they can take care of themselves, they should give back to themselves. Yeah? I know when they run into trouble, they run back to their parents. You know, they say, I know what I'm doing. I know what I'm doing. I, I know, I know. But if they run to, into trouble, they run back to their parents, start crying like one kitten like that. Yeah? Uh huh. They say, but you know what you are doing. Don't go and handle it. You listen. You listen. Don't experiment with life. It's, you, life doesn't have spare part. It's not like you are rehearsing life. You're already living it. When I realized I turned 50, if I was, when I turned 40, that the things I had done on me, I said, 40. Are you joking? 40. I said, I've been very angry. Because I saw a lot of land, 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 landmark I want to achieve that I have not even go, go, gone close. I said, what nonsense is this? This is how the thing goes. So and I'm now thinking, 30 years was, ago was just there. I was... 30 years ago, I was, I, was, I was very advanced in medical school already. So which means the next 30 years or time like that again now, I will be 80 something, 80, I mean, FM 80. Yes. Yes. You know 80? You know 80 is like, you are 80, you are, you are just, it's cruise. Amen. Hallelujah. That even when you stand up and you say, I can do it, I'm sorry, you say, Daddy, sit, Daddy, sit down. <laughs> Hallelujah. So what we are saying is this, brothers and sisters, you have no excuse to blame anybody. Your life won't turn out bad. Amen. Your children's life won't turn out bad. Amen. I want to talk to somebody under the sound of my voice. Stop blaming people. Stop blaming the system. Position yourself for reset. Anything can be reset. If they deny you the opportunity, fine. It's to their own shame. It's to your own glory to reposition yourself till the one they will give you will come. God was not blaming Satan. You know, we never had God mention Satan in Genesis chapter 1. God didn't say, it's the devil. It's the spirit of Apleplu. It's the ancestral spirit. It's the ancestral husband. It's the ancestral wife. It's the spirit husband. It's, the, it's my enemy. No. God said, we will come and deal with the enemy when we are finished with this. God commands his thing to come out of that darkness. Are you getting me now? Command your thing to come out of the challenge. Amen. Say amen. amen. Now, listen to me. In, in life, you have no excuse to blame the absence of things in your life. It's because they didn't give me this, they didn't give me that. The heart was without form and was empty. There was absence of things. But the Bible said, how do we know the attribute, the reference point of our God? He said, let's go back to creation. I can't do the business because I don't have capital. God didn't have capital too. Everything was empty. God didn't have capital. The place was empty. Say, I didn't do enough education. Exactly, the heart was not educated. It was empty. My dad didn't leave money for me. Oh, what were you? You know, I, I had children say what their parents looking at when everybody was making money. Okay, it's now your turn. Make it. We will learn from you. We will really learn from you. Seriously. I'm a kind of humble person that likes to learn. And I really want to learn from you. You understand what I'm saying now? You know in my language? That the child who said his dad was not rich and that his dad is not um, wealthy, he said, okay, now you are in the race. <laughs> Hallelujah. Glory to God. I have no reason to blame everybody. So what do I have reason to do? Let's read that scripture down a little bit. Let's read it, verse 21. What did he say? Because although they knew God, they did not glorify him as God, Neither were they thankful, and therefore, but rather, they were futile in their thought, and their foolish heart were darkened. Hear me what God is trying to say there. I have reason to think. 
once things are not the way I want it. Sit down and think. If I want to know how, why should I go, say, say, say this book of the law must not depart from your mouth. In it you will think day and night. Then you will know how to make your way prosperous and you're going to have good success. See, you have run from pillar to post enough. Sit down and think. If there's anything I like the way they do it in schools, is when a child goes to what they call, what's that place where they lock them? Detention. You know where I came from, there's no detention. They beat you. <laughs> but I prefer the one they do, detention. And when they put you in detention, they will lock you in that room, say, think about what you did. Uh-huh. See, you've blamed people enough. Think. Uh-huh. Yes, sir, she's a bad person. She said, think that when you saw the signs and the wonders of her badness, you are still buying suya. And she's saying, you know, I can't just control myself the way I love you. Now, 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 she said, now, now, you think now, you think now, you think now. You open the door. You think now. You think now. You think now. The last money you had, how you blew it. Sit down and think now. There is no reset without thinking. Uh, excuse me? There is no reset without thinking. If you are just blabbing, talking, blaming, excusing, crying, weeping, easing. Mm. Now, no reset without thinking. You know when people go out and bring devil? And they bring the devil to their pastor to marry, either as wife or as husband. And you know when, as pastor, you know you'll be asking questions. So is she born again? Is it, is it, is it, you, know, they don't want, you will see their body language. They don't want you to ask for that. Just do wedding for us. When they are doing counseling, they are nodding their head. Yes, 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 yes. Everything. So when you get to pastor, you know, pastor is a fanatical. You'll be asking you, are you born again? Just telling you, are born again? I know you are not, but you know, Jesus will change you. You know, and all of that. Now, after the whole thing now is spoiled, they now put pastor on a very long journey of fasting and prayer. And when the devil in him is ma- or her is manifesting more and more, they will be looking at you as if you are not anointed. You are anointed. <laughs> you are anointed. You are anointed. Very anointed. They just need to sit down and think. Tell your neighbor, say, sit down a little bit and think. You know, listen to me. See, because the moment you think along certain line, your thought will stop being fertile. It will start being fruitful. So you will start knowing what do I need to do. There are certain challenges of life that you just have to bear them. Seriously. If, if you marry a certain kind of person, that's your cross. You bear it. You bear your cross. Jesus said it. Every man we bear is cross. It's as simple as that. If you choose a certain pathway of life in career and it turns out in a certain way, you see, before you start blaming politicians that they are rich, go and join politics. Because 30 years time, when they position themselves where the milk and honey is flowing, now, it will be futile in thought for somebody to be thinking God will kill him. God doesn't kill like that. So you sit down and think. Ponder your ways. Think the path you are going. Will it lead me to where I'm going to? The one, the step I've taken. Yeah, just something now. Once you are not thoughtful, you'll be fertile, unproductive. That's the meaning of fertility. Unproductive in their thinking. He said, but as a child of God, I need to think. Say, I need to think. I need to think. So the first place to do your research is in your thought. Say, a reset of my thought. Of my thought. Hallelujah. Say, amen. amen. Then he said, I need to believe. A reset in my belief system. And I need to be thankful. You know, if you are going through trouble, I want you to still be thankful, no matter how bad it is. You know why? As long as you are alive, you have a chance of changing it. Anything can be reset. Anything can change. Anything can be reset. Anything can change. Say amen. amen. What is the pattern? I have a platform of demand. 
for reset. Every time you read Genesis chapter 1, always have it at the back of your mind. I have a platform of demand for reset. Did you get what I'm trying to say? Things are not working right in your life. Don't give in. Say, when I see Genesis chapter 1, I know I have a platform for reset. He said, that's the only way we can know God, creation. That when you fly in aircraft and you are seeing the layer of nice cloud in their Columbus and different form, you will realize that there was a time all of this thing was darkness. There was a time everything was darkness, everything was water, but everything now is beautiful. So if your life is in a kind of form of mess you don't like, you need to understand that Genesis chapter 1 shows you there's a platform of demand for reset. That everything can be beautiful. Everything can change for better. Say amen. amen. Say amen. Are you with me too tonight? Now, you need to understand that if you are a child of God, you mustn't be stuck. Genesis chapter 1, darkness covered the surface of the deep, but God was not stuck. The plan of God was not stuck. Are you getting me? Amen. You can't be stuck with failure. Say amen. amen. Say amen. amen. You can't be stuck in chaos. Say amen. amen. You can't be stuck with emptiness. Say amen. amen. You can't be stuck in darkness. Say amen. amen. Whatever is not working in your life is not the final destination. I said it's not the final destination. Amen. The pattern of heaven is that if it's not working, it is not the final destination. The Spirit of God is brooding over it. A change must be demanded. God demanded a change. God didn't say, I'm God. After all, the heart should know what I want. You know, you can't say, as, 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 um, you know, what should be, what will be, will be. No. Quite sera, sera. No. 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 You can't say, Rome has spoken. What else is there to say? No. There are too many things for you to attend to in destiny. The fact that things are going the wrong way and they are stubbornly going that direction doesn't mean you should fold your hand, sit and be blaming stuff. You need to know that, you know what, there's a, there's a platform for demand of change. And that change, I would rather die pursuing the reset than die in chaos, in emptiness, in darkness, in what is not working. Say amen. Say amen. amen. Hallelujah. And that will bring me to tie it together tonight for you this way. Certain resets definitely require the help of God. You know the balance? Certain requests do what? Require the help of God. Are you still with me tonight? Yes, sir. I said certain reset require what? Yes, Say it again. Say certain request. Yes, certain reset require this, the help of God. Let's start with Jeremiah chapter 32. You know, the reset we saw in Genesis chapter 1 wasn't scientific. Wasn't astronomical, nothing wasn't geographical. There was an involvement of higher power. Say higher power. power. Now, what will happen in your life from this meeting is this: the kind of research you will be seeing will involve higher power. Amen. Say amen. amen. I said higher power, amen. power in your health, higher power in your career, higher power. In your marriage, I said, as you are putting in your little effort, God will be crowning it with success. Amen. As your pearl is planting and your Apollo is watering, God will be giving you the increase. Amen. There are certain resets that are not in the precept of men. They are, they require, no matter how you come. For example, when you hear Toby giving his testimony, how can, you can't change yourself. You can't beat him to salvation. No matter how his, if his dad was beating him, if, if we just kill him, but that won't save him. Wise men pray. Wise women pray. You can't steal yourself into prosperity. There's a curse in the house of a thief. You can't fight your way into acceptance. You know, you're fighting, they must accept me. No, 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 no. You have to contract favor. I said you have to contract favor. 
There are certain reasons. So that favor will now make you to be accepted. Say amen. amen. Hallelujah. Amen. Jeremiah chapter 32. Now let's read verse 17. You will see what I'm saying here. You know, so that reset we saw in Genesis chapter 1. This is how it happened. Read it, everybody. One, two, go. Ah, Lord God, thou hast made the heaven and the earth by thy great power. Ah, Lord God, thou hast made the heaven and the earth by thy outstretched arm. We know nothing is too difficult for thee. Ta -ra -ra, nothing is too difficult. Hallelujah, you're the great and mighty God. Great in counsel and mighty indeed. Mighty indeed. Nothing, nothing. Absolutely nothing. Nothing is too difficult for thee. Listen to me. If you want to clap, clap, come on. When many of you are supposed to have been born again and listening to that, you are listening to Michael Jackson and all those. All those unsaved things. You, know, you, are, you are breaking. Amen. You are breaking. God have mercy upon you. Many of you, the Christian song you know, they are no more than the fingers in your hand. But the worldly song you know, God have mercy. Topic for another day. Maybe Toby will come and, and Pastor Sheik will come and teach that day. But look at it. How did the heart reset? God great power. I see God great power Amen. coming on your life, Amen. coming on your circumstance, Amen. coming on your situation. Amen. In the mighty name of Jesus. Amen. Say God's great power. God's great power. You know, when I tie this thing up here, that is what I want you, you will, when I ask you to stand up, that's what you will stand up to demand. You will lay demand on God's great power. It can turn darkness to light. Yes. You will lay the man on his outstretched arm. It can turn emptiness to fullness. It can turn formlessness to form. It can change anything. In fact, when that power of God and his outstretched arm is upon the circumstance you are dealing with, nothing is too difficult for him. It might be difficult, but it won't be too difficult for him. It might be difficult for government, it won't be too difficult for God. It might be difficult for doctor, it won't be too difficult for a girl. It might be difficult for you or for your finance, but it won't be difficult for your girl. You know, it's difficult to see a good husband, but it's not too difficult for God. You know, it's difficult to see a good wife, but it's not too difficult for God. You know, it's difficult to cross over in financial strata of life. That's from poor to rich. The system is designed to keep the poor happy in poverty, so that the rich can enjoy their riches. But the crossover is not too difficult for your God. It's not too difficult for the barren to become mother of children. It's not difficult. It's not too difficult for the kidney to start working. For the liver to start working. For the cancer to die. It might be difficult for doctor. It might be difficult for body physiology and anatomy and pathology. But it's not difficult for the finger of God. I said it's not difficult for God. Say, I believe God that with him all things are possible. The reset I'm trusting God for is not difficult for my God. It's not. It's not. It's not. It's not difficult for your God. Hallelujah. I said it's not difficult for your God. Somebody of your stock understood that. And he lay hold of God's outstretched arm. And his life torn. First Chronicle chapter 4. Let's do chapter 4, first Chronicle, verse 9 and 10, and then in fact, let's do verse 9 and 10, and then we pray. Listen to me. The real reset. Listen to me, brothers and sisters. You know, salvation. Toby started the preaching for you already. Salvation is a reset on its own. God would translate you from the kingdom of darkness to the kingdom of his dear son. That's a reset. You are no more lost. You are no more a child of the devil. You are no more of darkness. You are of light. If you are born again, say, I'm of light. Say, I'm saved. I'm not a child of the devil. 
If you are not born again before you leave here tonight, make sure you give your life to Christ. To be born again is nothing but to believe that the Lord Jesus paid the price for your sin and to receive it into your heart with faith and confess it with your mouth. And in Romans chapter 8 and verse 32, don't open it, he said, He that can do the reset of salvation, how much more will he not also with salvation give you all things, all other resets? Reset in your health, reset in your marriage, reset in your career. Anybody that can rescue you from physical hell can rescue you from emotional hell. Anyone that can rescue you from physical hell can rescue you from financial hell. Being born again means you've been rescued from physical hell. You are not going to hell again. You are going to heaven. When you leave this world, whatever time you leave, you are going to heaven. It is one that can rescue you from the physical hell meant for Satan and his angel, can rescue you from hell in marriage, hell of in-laws, hell at place of work. Are you getting me now? The reset is limitless. According to Romans chapter 8 and verse 32. He that spare not his own son. Now that was the scripture that I lay hold of when we were looking for a child. God gave me that scripture in Whips Cross Hospital that day. I said, God, what, is, what are the key to this thing? Because we can't. He said, open room. And I had my Bible with me. In those days, there's no phone Bible. There's no, it's Nokia N97. N97, that was the biggest phone then. And I had it. But there's no, you know, it's not, it's not this one that you're touching Bible. So you have Bibles. So every time where I go, I have my New Testament Bible with me. So I opened Romans chapter 8, verse 32. He said, He that spare not his own son, but gave him to you for a ransom. I said, How much more will he not freely give you all things? Every other reset is a secondary reset. The primary reset is salvation. Once you are saved, anything can turn. I said, Anything can change. I said, Anything can improve. Say, I believe it. Look at your brother, Jabez. Now, Jabez was more honorable than his brothers. There was a reset. And his mother, in the beginning, called his name Jabez because he was born in pain or in sorrow. In sorrow. In sorrow. In sorrow. But there was a reset. And how did the reset happen? Of course, we were not told what job Jabez was doing, but he must have a job he was doing, yeah? We, must not, we were not told... How long Jabez prayed, but he prayed. We were not told the thinking pattern of Jabez, but one thing we were certain of is this. Jabez thinking pattern, Jabez kind of work, and Jabez way of looking at life tallied with God kind of thinking. Jabez realized that this is not the way it should be. Mommy said that is the way. Her husband agreed with her, but God has not said so. Who says a thing and it come to pass? When the Almighty has not said it, said it. Say amen. amen. And so what did Jabez do? He employed God's great power and his outstretched arm. He called on God of Israel saying, Oh, that you will bless me indeed. Enlarge my territory. Your land, your hand will be with me. That it will keep me from evil. That I may not cause pain. In fact, in KJV is better. Put it in KJV. You understand what I'm saying now? Put it in KJV. You see, now I say, will keep me from evil, that he may not grieve me. Not that, he may not, that he may not grieve me. Amen? Amen? Everywhere he went to apply for a job, they were rejecting him. Everywhere he bring his product from farm, they weren't buying. Who wants to buy from man of pain, man of sorrow? But when he called on God, everything changed. You know what Jabez did? He did away with being a victim. I want somebody tonight to do away with being a victim. Say, I'm doing away with being a victim. Say, I'm not a victim. Okay, stand on your feet. Let's start it from there. Let's start it from there. Because, you know, what I want you to do, I've been talking to you since. What God talked to me to tell you. So I want you to go back and talk it to God. And let him bring it to pass in your life. Hallelujah. Thank you, Lord Jesus. Thank you, Lord Jesus. Hallelujah. 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 Hallelujah.
I bless you today. I'm not a victim. I bless you today. I'm not a victim. Lord Jesus tonight, my change has come. Hallelujah. Come and say, Abba Father. Abba Father. Abba Father. people right now let the glory of the Lord fall upon the people right now Abba Father Abba Father we call upon you right now to me, let there be a reset, oh God, let there be a reset, oh God, are you praying, are you talking to the Lord, let there be a reset, I might have been a victim of not going to school, or not learning a job, but Lord, a reset right now, new opportunity will be given to me, I might have been a victim of bad relationship, but Lord, a reset, 
I'm not having a victim. Jabez was a victim of how his mother felt. But he refused to stay a victim. You know, his mother felt sorrowful and made him sorrow. And his life started being sorrowful. But not for long. I'm not going to be a victim of my blood lineage, my natural lineage. I'm not going to be a victim. Every demon of Akitude lineage or Oketade lineage, they don't have expression in my destiny. A reset has been brought to me by Jesus. I'm not a victim of high blood pressure. I'm not a victim of high blood sugar. I'm not a victim of breast cancer, prostate cancer. No, I'm not a victim of, of struggling. You know, many of you came from family where you struggle, 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 and things still don't change. Now you are born again. You are in reset. You are not a victim of that kind of thing again. You are not a victim of ancestral spirit. You are not a victim of lineage curse. You are not a victim of spirit husband. No, go ahead and reinforce it. Hallelujah. Amen. I want you to listen to me tonight, everybody. The Spirit of God is here, the way it was in the beginning, hovering over your case. But God wasn't quiet. That's God. Sir, God wasn't quiet. Everything God didn't want to see, He didn't quiet. Everything He wanted to see, He wasn't. That's God. Let there be light. God didn't say light knows that I, after all, you know I need light. No. The Spirit of God is said, don't keep quiet. I said the Spirit of God is said, don't keep quiet. Say, I'm not a victim. Say, I'm not a victim of biology. Uh -huh. Have you seen people? People are born with all kind of biological deformity and the problem. And it defines their life. But there's a God in heaven that can reset anything. Nobody pray that is there's no woman who will say, okay, make a womb not be able to conceive. No, it's not your fault. But the beginning is you are not a victim. You are born again. Say, I'm born again. Born again. What will have made me a victim has been nailed to the cross. I'm no more a victim. I'm no longer a stay. To sing, I'm a child of God. Don't sing it, but pray today. I'm not a victim of my past, of the bloodline I came from, of my mother's mistake, my dad's mistake. I'm not a victim of somebody's wickedness. Many of you have dealt with wicked people, bad people, horrible people. They want you to remain their victim, but you are not their victim. I'm not a victim of somebody's rejection. I'm not a victim of somebody's rejection. I'm not a victim of the bad words somebody has spoken towards me before. A reset. Now go ahead. You are not a victim of a bad supervisor in your office, a bad manager, a, a, a racist manager, a racist supervisor, a, 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 a begotten person. No. God reset everything for you now. No more rejection. No more being blocked. No more being resisted. In the mighty name of Jesus, I'm not a victim. 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 Lekusha kabara makariesh. Hey, lagabash. Leko preko to shakarama na magodiye. Ekarama kusha parendi al prosete vali. In Jesus' mighty name, we pray. So why did the Bible use comparative adjective for Jabez? Was he competing with his brother? No. But there was a time his life was limited. And they would think that was all it was to it. Until the God mighty hand and power showed up for him. Then he became more. I said you become more. Amen. More than what you are now. Amen. More than where you are now. Amen. Every limitation will be taken of your life. Amen. Say in the name of Jesus, let every limitation be taken away. A reset against every limitation. Will you go ahead? Even in your thoughts, you'll be thinking certain great thoughts now, certain winning thoughts, certain winning formula will be running in your head, and when you do it, it will come with result. No more, no more, no more limitation away from limitation. Away, I'm reset away from limitation. Are you praying? Are you talking to God? 
I'm no more a victim and every limitation in my life I command a reset above limitation reset beyond limitation reset financial limitation career limitation marital status limitation health limitation in the name of Jesus oh come on pray there are no more limited he said bless me indeed enlarge my territory take limitation away take limitation away take limitation away say enlarge my post take limit he had post Bobby you know he had post as of that time he had post but it wasn't working for him he had post he had post but it wasn't delivered until the limitation was taken away then he realized that ah, we can build ship here oh, yes you know many food in the till of the poor but I see that is poor because they lack understanding of how to go out and large take limitation away from my thoughts in the name of Jesus Amen Wherever you are, say amen. amen. Jabez, you will believe that even in the in the midst of that sorrow, he had a post. He had his own post. He didn't say give me a post. He said, just enlarge the one I have. You have something. But because of the circumstance of his life, it was of no use, no bearing on his destiny. You are not empty. Say, I'm not empty. That there's something in my life that God can walk upon and I'll be delivered into my desire heaven say God stretch forth your hand upon me right now there's something in me you can make use of that I will I will just find fulfillment there's something in my education in my skill set the way I think in my environment enlarge my coast enlarge my territory enlarge my thinking enlarge my vision enlarge my hand enlarge my step where I've been retarded and I've been walking backward and I've been slowed down by life Lord, now enlarge my step under me. Let me cover, let me cover stride, let me cover ground. Help me, oh God, enlarge the coast of the Adam church. Help us, oh God. Are you talking to the Lord right now? Hey, hey, hey. Pray, pray, talk to God. Hallelujah. Amen. In Jesus' mighty name, we pray. Say amen as if you believe. Say amen as if you believe. You know, since the day they named him Jabez, an evil spirit was activated on his behalf. And that evil spirit has been pursuing him everywhere to slay him. He knew it. Every evil that is activated on your behalf to slay your health, to slay your finance, to slay your vision. In the name of Jesus, Son of the living God, they are cast now. He said that thou, your hand will be with me, you will keep me from evil. He knows there is an evil that had been activated and was after him. That evil has frustrated the work of his hand, has kept him down, emasculated him, but God of heaven showed up. I said every subduing forces, force that has been set after you to subdue you, to limit you, to emasculate you, the hand of God, the outstretched hand of God breaks them off you right now. Yeah. Say no more subdue. Now talk to God in the name of Jesus. Every evil that has been activated to subdue me in the name of Jesus, I cast them. Jesus said, This sign shall follow the believing ones. In my name, they will cast out devil. Cast it. Every evil that has been activated to frustrate me, to hinder me, to resist me, 
to make me dis- to get me discouraged. Every evil man, like evil, evil, like men, satanic forces. Andado tekora paya nagata zuzemo kato prigadi ke tu sabi. Let them be broken. Evil in your health, in your finance, in your career, on your children. Broken, 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 broken. Every evil broken. Every evil pursuing your health, pursuing your finance. Every little time money gather, that evil will show up. And until the money finishes, it won't go. That evil is cast today. Every time opportunity shows up, that evil shows up with the opportunity and create delay and create challenge until the opportunity fizzles out and loses value. That evil is cast out tonight. Every evil, every time you are trusting God for something, delay shows up with it. That evil is cast tonight. 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 Hallelujah. Say amen. A reset by blessedness. Put your hand on your head wherever you are. We're not laying hand on anyone today. You will lay hand on yourself. Say in the name of Jesus. Say I'm blessed with all spiritual blessings in heavenly places through Christ Jesus. Therefore, I demand reset by the reason of my blessedness. Now, it must show in the work of your hand. Go ahead. Release it. Reset. I'm blessed. I'm not cursed. Say, Akitundi Ola Inka is blessed, it's not cursed. My son, Moyolua, is blessed, it's not cursed. My daughter, Moyolua, is blessed, it's not cursed. My wife is not cursed. The church I pastor is not cursed. Not at all. So therefore, reset by blessedness. Things that accompany blessedness. Things that accompany blessedness. I said things that accompany blessedness. Hallelujah. Amen. Amen. Okay, take your hand off your head. Let me describe you for you. When I finish describing you, put your hand back and deliver it in prayer. It shall be like a tree planted by the river, by the course of water. Its leaf will also not wither. That bring forth its fruit in its season, and whatsoever it does shall prosper. How does the Bible describe that person? It says, Blessed is the man. So it's, it's, that's you. I said, That is you. Say, I'm that blessed man that the Bible is talking about. So everything in my life must reset according to that blessedness. I'm like a man planted by the rivers, by like a tree planted by water. Whatsoever I do must prosper. My leaf must not wither. You know, leaf withering, kidney can't fail. My leaf can't wither. Stroke won't take my leg. It won't take my hand. Alzheimer won't take my memory. A gatusa. My finance won't dry up. My joy won't dry up. My leaf will not wither. Whatsoever I do will prosper. I believe, I receive. I believe, I receive. Reset by blessedness. I say reset by blessedness. And that man like a tree planted by the rivers of water. Reset by blessedness. Reset by blessedness. Reset by blessedness. Hey! Are you there? In Jesus' name, we we'll pray. Two more you will pray. And then after that, you'll be thankful. Pastor Toby will come and lead us in praise for a few minutes. Because, you know, the Romans we read said, once you understand divine pattern to creation, you'll be thankful. Then your thought won't be futile. But will be fruitful. And that's what you have done tonight. Your thought is no more fertile, but fruitful. Amen. You will always find a way out. Amen. You won't be stuck. It won't be said that you are stuck. No. No matter how bad it is, you will still say it can be reset. I change everything. Everything will be reset. Everything will be fine. Say amen. amen. So two more you will do. Say in the name of Jesus, amen. reset for expansion and enlargement. As it was for Jabez, 
Say the same God of Israel. He is my God. Through Christ Jesus. Go ahead, declare it over your life. Reset for enlargement. Reset for expansion. If I'm doing well, I'll do better. If I'm doing better, I'll do much more better. In the name of Jesus. Reset for enlargement. Reset for em Reset for enlargement. Reset for enlargement. Reset for enlargement. Are you there praying? Are you there praying? Ye karamayambos. Reset for expansion. Expansion in the work of your hand. Expansion of your territory. Enlargement of your greatness. Reset for enlargement. Reset for enlargement. Reset for en expansion. Do Lord, do it for me. Lord, do it in my life. Lord, do it for me. Lord, do it for my life. Lord, do it for me. Lord, do it in my life. In the mighty name of Jesus. Reset for enlargement. Reset for and expansion. Do it in Diadem Church. Do it in the work of our hand here. Do it in this ministry, Lord. We'll be grateful, Lord. In Jesus' mighty name, we we'll pray. He said, Evil will always be around, but it won't slay me. Reset for victory and dominion. The last time darkness reigned was that first, after that first day. Brothers and sisters, dominion came. Light shone. The end, I'm serving quick notice to the darkness operating in somebody's life. No more darkness. No more defeat. No more oppression. No more affliction. Every force of oppression and affliction are broken right now. In the name of Jesus. Whosoever presses anyone down in night, in the sleep of the night, I curse it now and I command it. Go! In the name of Jesus. Oppression in your head. Go! In the name of Jesus. Oppression in your career. Go! In the name of Jesus. Oppression in your life. Go! In the name of Jesus. Oppression by Satan, by sin. In the name of Jesus, I command to give way right now. In the name of Jesus. Say, reset for victory and dominion. Lord, let your power rest on me for it now. Let your power rest on me. Lord, do it for me. Yes, 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 yes. Pastor Toby, just step forward. The choir, step forward with him. And let's just praise God for a few minutes. For victory. Let's thank God for victory. Reset for victory. For dominion. The wicked will not exact upon you. Nor the son of wicked afflict you. Every tongue that rises up against you in judgment is condemned. No weapon form against you prosper. Every tongue that rises up against you in judgment is condemned right now, right now, right now. A reset for victory. A reset for victory. Hallelujah, a reset for victory. Hallelujah, a reset for victory. Hallelujah. If you are under the sound of my voice and you are not born again, I'm going to give you one chance. You are not saved. You know that you are not born again or you have been born again before you are vaccinated. Put your hand on your chest and say this prayer before, with, before God with me. Say, Heavenly Father, I've come to you today for reset of redemption. Forgive my sin. Cleanse me and wash me. I repent of my sins and unrighteousness. And I've come through Jesus to receive eternal life. Write my name in the book of life. In the name of Jesus, I renounce Satan, I renounce sin, and I renounce self. In Jesus' name. Lord, receive your people. Let their name be written in the book of life. Let eternal life take over in their heart. Every shadow of darkness, let them depart. And let the name of Jesus be glorified. In Jesus' mighty name, we pray. We're going to do this for um, seven minutes. Let's make it intense. Seven minutes. Hallelujah. After that seven minutes, I will come back and pronounce the final blessing upon the people. Can we do it? Hallelujah. 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 Amen. Father, we give you praise.
Thank you, Lord Jesus. Jehovah turns my life around. Jehovah turns my life around. He makes a way where there is no way. Jehovah has the final say. Jehovah turns my life around. Jehovah turns my life around. And he makes a way where there is no way. Jehovah has the final say. I said, who has the final say? Jehovah has the final say. I said, who has the final say? Jehovah has the final say. Jehovah turns my life around. Jehovah turns my life around. He makes a way where there is no way. Jehovah has a final say. Jehovah turns my life around. Jehovah turns my life around. He makes a way. He makes a way where there is no way. Jehovah has a final say. There's no God, there's no God like Jesus. There's no one, there's no one like Him. There's no one, there's no one like Jesus. There's no one ever been like Him. Like there's nobody, there's no one, there's no one like Jesus. There's no one, there's no one like Him. All around the world, no one, there's no one like Jesus. No one like All right, I say I search and search. No one, no one. I looked all around it. No one, no one. I search and search. No one, no one. There's no one. There's no one like. There is nobody. There's no one. There's no one like you. Nobody like you. No one. There's no one like you. Turn the lights around. No one. There's no one. There's no one, there's no one like him. There's no one, there's no one like Jesus. There's no one, there's no one like him. There's no one, there's no one like Jesus. There's no one, there's no one like him. I say, come, let's praise the Lord. Come, let's praise the Lord. Come, let's praise the Lord. He will never change from eternity to eternity. He'll be my Lord. Waiting, I go give to you my praise. 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 I don't get money, my praise. Money, oh my praise. I say, waiting, I go give to you my praise. Waiting, I go give to you my praise. Wait, come, let's praise the Lord. Come, let's praise the Lord. Let's praise the Bible. Let's praise the Lord. Come, let's thank the Lord. Come, let's praise the Lord. Let's praise the Lord. Come, let's praise the Lord. The King of Kings. Talk about His nation and us. I will sing my praise unto you, my Lord. I 
will shout, I will dance to you. You have been my help forever, never. I say in the morning when I wake up, I will sing my praise unto you, my Lord. And I will dance, I will shout to you. You have been my help forever, never. Somebody pray. Somebody worship, somebody I say somebody worship, somebody pray. Somebody worship, somebody oh, pray. somebody worship, somebody pray. I say somebody worship, somebody pray. Somebody worship, somebody pray. Hey, somebody worship, somebody pray. Somebody worship, somebody pray. Hey, somebody worship, somebody pray. 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 Rejoicing, feel this 
there's a reset right now on our part in your life whatever was not working before we start working out in the name of Jesus where there have been rejection I command acceptance where there have been chaos I command order where there have been sorrow I command joy Jesus. Amen. Where there have been failure, I command success. Amen. In your life. Amen. Upon your life. Amen. Around your life. Amen. In your journey. Amen. When you wake up. Amen. When you sleep. Amen. When you step out. Amen. When you come back. Amen. In the mighty name of Jesus, God that made everything to be very good. We make everything to be very good for you. Amen. From this moment. Amen. The month of April, you will say everything is very good. Amen. The month of May, you will say everything is also very good. Amen. The month of June, everything will be very good. Amen. In July and August, everything will be very good. Amen. September, October of this year, everything will be very good. Amen. November, December, the rest of your life, everything will be very good. Amen. Where darkness was ruling before, I command light to shine now. Amen. Your confusion is taken away. Amen. Your dilemma receives light. Amen. Depression go. Amen. Elation come. Amen. Discouragement go. Amen. Courage comes. Amen. In the mighty name of Jesus. Amen. I command release upon you. Amen. By the power of the Holy Ghost. Amen. The outstretched hand of God. To help you. Amen. To assist you. Amen. You've considered the creation of God and you have been thankful knowing that it can reset anything to your advantage you will not be futile in your thoughts Amen. the works of your hand will not end in futility Amen. your family won't end in futility Amen. your life will fulfill purpose Amen. you will serve God to the end Amen. Father, every word that your servant has pronounced over the people, let them catch. Amen. Let the portion of anointing that you release for tonight's service, let it make it work. Amen. The angel you assigned to this church, let them run after those pronouncements. Amen. We shall be grateful. Yes, amen. Thank you, Father Lord. In Jesus' name we pray. Amen. Hallelujah. 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 Hey. It's the sound of victory. Hallelujah. 
You know today is 31st of March, the end of the month. So you are resetting into a new month. Amen. You know today is the last of first quarter. Another quarter is coming from tomorrow. So you are resetting into a new quarter. Amen. Great thing begin to happen in your life Amen. in Jesus' name. Amen. Amen. So now it's time for I target Thanksgiving offering. Package it very quickly. Thanksgiving for reset. Thanksgiving for reset. Can we do it very quickly because of our time? Hallelujah. Hallelujah. You need to do something if you believe that your life has been reset. And I know for sure that everyone under the, under, uh, under the, under my uh, design of my voice now, is being, their life is being reset in the name of Jesus. If you want every look, can we signal by raising up your hand the, so that the usher can make it available for you? And if you are paying online, if, you, uh, if it is electronic, uh, it, it's already there being projected. Can we do that very quickly? Reset. Proper reset to a greater things in Jesus' name. If you have done so, can we raise it to the Lord in prayer? Father, I will bless your holy name. Thank you for this Thanksgiving offering for a greater reset to a greater thing. Father, accept it, O Lord, in the name of Jesus. Lord, we know we are, as we are waking up tomorrow to a new month, to a new quarter, greater thing begin to happen to us in the name of Jesus. We will hear good news in the name of Jesus. Phone call of good news, email of good news in the name of Jesus. Every of our desire will be met in the name of Jesus. I will come back here, return with glory to give testimony in Jesus' wonderful name, we pray. Amen. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. I'm walking in power. I'm walking in miracles. I know who I am. I'm walking in power. I'm walking miracles. I live a life of faith. I know who I am. Oh, 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 I know who I am. Oh, 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 oh. For to show his excellence, all I require, all I require for life, God has given me. I know who I am. We are a chosen, we are a chosen generation. Call for to show his excellence, all I require, all I require for life, God has given me. I know who I am. I know who God says I am. What He says I am. Where He says I am. I know who I am. I know who God says I am. What He says I am. Where He says I'm at. I know who I am. I'm walking in power. I'm walking in miracles. I live a life of favor. I know who I am. Walking, walking, in power. I'm walking in miracles. I live a life of favor. I know who I am. Oh, 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 oh. Oh, oh, oh. Say, I am holy, I am righteous, oh, I am so rich, I am beautiful, 
Lord can come in my wonder. It doesn't matter what's in now. Can you see his glory? I know who I am. Say, can you come in my wonder? It doesn't matter what you see now. Can you see his glory? I know who I am. Hallelujah. Glory, glory to God. Glory to God. So let, let, let's relax tomorrow. And don't forget, you should be here again on Sunday. Yeah. And invite people. Don't be selfish. Let us invite people on Sunday and let us all be here. And if I might remind us, yes, that's what <laughs> we can't forget that. Next Saturday, not this Saturday, next Saturday, that's the Easter Saturday. Remember, what are we doing next Saturday? Can somebody remind me? Outreach at Romford. Join us there. Let's go. Let's go out there. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. It's between 12 o'clock and 3 o'clock. 12 to 3 o'clock. Because we want people to do it and then go back and start and, you know, enjoy your Easter. So be there. The Lord bless you as you join us there in Jesus' name. Amen. Can we share the grace in fellowship? May the grace of the Lord Jesus Christ, the love of God, and the sweet fellowship of the Holy Spirit be with us now and forevermore. Amen. Surely, goodness and message shall follow us all the days of our life, and we shall bring the hands of the Lord.